you guys all the goodies we got to boost our little Tacoma. We got right to working on mounting up our turbo, machining some custom parts, and like any custom car project, we ran into some fitment issues that required modification. Alright, so it looks like our charge pipe piping is going to be uh, pretty simple to do because I've got this reducer that comes off the throttle body right now and with this 90 that's painted, which is nice so it won't, uh, won't heat transfer as bad if it's painted. Um, and then it looks like all I need from here is uh, to trim this one down and re-roll a bead on this pipe and then do like a 90 degree uh, reducer from this that goes from the two inch to the two and a half inch. And then that will probably be it. We are almost there. Okay, so we don't want this cut pipe to pop off when it's under pressure, because it doesn't have the bead anymore. We've cut the bead off. So I don't have a professional bead roller and they're really expensive, so I found another trick that someone said online that you can just take a set of uh, like crimpers that have uh, this type of uh, crimp on it and you can just kind of go around and crimp. I tried it on another piece of pipe and it worked pretty good, so we'll see how it does here. You just don't want to press too hard because you could shove this right through the pipe and crack it, which would not be good, but. We'll see how it goes. So rolling the bead here didn't uh, look very pretty, but you can definitely see a pretty prominent uh, raised section right there. So it should work. I guess we'll see once we get pressure on it. So we just gotta throw our clamps on and the piping to the intake's done. Jesus. Jesus. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Oh my God. Am I low on cooling? You're so low on cooling. Yeah, I knew that actually. Oh my God. Yeah, it's funny because I actually knew that. Really? Yeah. In order to gain some clearance at the front of our turbo to build our intake, this upper radiator hose needed some trimming to get it out of the way. Take temp sensor right into the intake. Cool. Finishing up our intake here, I just wanted to show you guys a super cool trick that I learned uh, for making brackets on the cheap. 
I found that electrical conduit works really well. It's easy to cut with a standard pipe cutter. When you find the spot where you want to put a bolt hole, you just put in a vise and you flatten it out, drill a hole, and then you can orient it at any angle. It's easy to bend, it's easy to work with, and because it's galvanized, it doesn't corrode. I'll show you how it's done. So one of the things that always poses a problem when adding a turbo to a non-turbo engine is vacuum routing. Now, the issue with this is that since the car was never designed to have a turbo on it, uh, the vacuum routing is set up so that all the components rely on vacuum because whether the throttle plate is open or closed, you're always going to have vacuum pulling on all these components. Now that we have added a turbo, we're going to get pressure from the outlet side of the turbo through the entire manifold. So that kind of poses some issues with certain uh, key components in the system, one of which being the idle air control valve. So what we want for the idle air control valve is after the MAF, but pre-boost air. So that is the, the section between the inlet on the compressor housing and the backside of the MAF, because we need metered air, but it cannot be pressure so what I've done now is taken an old component out of the original intake, cut it apart and put it in between the coupler that goes on to the compressor housing and the coupler that goes on to the back of the MAF. And what I'm going to do is run a hose from that all the way around the firewall back up to this hose here. And then I'm also going to add one more thing, which is a check valve. So that is a good way to stop all your components that you don't want boost getting into from getting boost. So we have a check valve that allows air to flow into the manifold but not away from the manifold so that when we're building boost with the turbo, which we're not necessarily requiring the action of the idle air control valve at that point, we're not losing any boost through that, that line. The other part is the brake booster. You don't want to be under boost and be putting boost into the brake booster. So we're going to do the same thing as we're going to chuck this line off and add uh, a check valve to this circuit. Uh, now as far as PCV goes, I've actually added a catch can that vents atmospherically and we're going to tie both of the PCV lines together, cap them off at the manifold, and run them into that catch can over there. Uh, the other thing is the, the power steering has some kind, of, um, some kind of progressive power steering pressure valve on it that I don't necessarily want to use anymore. Um, so I can cap off this T here that goes to the fuel pressure regulator and then just remove those lines from the circuit. And then all this stuff right here for the EGR, we are getting rid of the EGR. One reason is because uh, all, all these are not designed to run with boost uh, modulator thing and there's a, you know, the diaphragm that's in the EGR doesn't really work with boost. The other problem is, is that our turbo manifold does not allow for a flange to connect the crossover pipe to go from the hot side to the cold side. So regardless, we're not going to be able to use it. But we have a solution for that too.
properly delete our EGR system, we're installing LC Engineering's EGR Delete Kit, which came complete with block off plates, hardware, and a resistor to install onto the EGR temp sensor plug to prevent the ECU from throwing a code. So one of the things I want to check here before I pull the pan and put my drain back fitting into the pan is just to make sure that I'm getting oil pressure to the turbo. So I've got the battery hooked back up. I have the distributor unplugged so that the thing won't fire up on us accidentally and spoil all over the place. And this is my drain back line here. So I'm just going to crank the car over and just see if we get oil coming out of this line. Oh, there it goes. Hey, look at that. We have oil. With the modified oil pan reinstalled into our truck, it's time to refill all of our essential fluids and hopefully hear this bad boy spool for the very first time. Bit of an issue.